Hey guys, one clue here. I hope all of you are doing really well and having a really great day. Today we do have another update. I'm two days late on this, but better later than never, right? So let's get started and right into it. As you can see, we are back again as usual on GitHub. We are sitting on the release page of Shift's GitHub repository for the ESP Miner Node QX Plus. This is the repository, which is the firmware for your Node QX, for your Node X, for your Node X Gamma, for your Node QX Plus, and so on. All these Node QX, Node X thingies, this is the repository for the firmware of it. And we do have a couple of changes and improvements, and I quickly want to go over them. So first of all, the temperature readings have been updated for variants with the BM1370 chip. So now the chip with BM1370, which is used in the BitX Gamma, for example, or in the Node QX Plus Plus, is now better when it comes to reading the actual temperature. The reported values are now higher and more accurately reflecting the actual internal chip temperature. As a result, automatic fan control should now function as intended. Additionally, some inconsistencies related to board dependent default settings have also been resolved. So in general, this is an awesome update. It is a minor update. You do see this with the dot one at the end. So we are sitting now at the version 1.0.28.1 and there are basically five changes. So the first one is the switch LED on off only if needed in the pull request 124, which is basically just an update on that the LED screen is now only switching on and off if it is actually needed and not sometimes random or with no real action that would actually use the screen to be on. As well as there is a new overlay, which is the found block overlay. And if I'm not mistaken, this should actually bring your display online if you do have the screen as offline set or as off set. And now you should see the, hey, you found a block message on your screen as well. In general, this pull request also Basically, when, when, when anything that is critical is happening, should actually turn on your screen. So this is really great and awesome to see. Also, there are a couple of improvements when it comes to the stratum. Previously, when you do connect your miner to brains for whatever reason, I don't know why you would do that. But if you do that and you get some rejected messages, they are now counted and brought onto you on the web UI as intended. So now you should be able to see what kind of message is there happening? Why is there any rejection? happening. Also, there is an improvement on the automatic fan control, temp measurement and default board specific values for inverted fan polarity and flipped screen in the 126 pull request. So now you do have a little bit better automatic fan control, which is in general really good. We already have talked about this in the previous update where this is going into it. And with the next update, there will also be a little bit of a change when it comes to the fan controller and this is really great to see that there's an update on this end as well, as well as there's a revised of the config example CVS, which is awesome because previously you do have this config file and there are plenty of random numbers and you'd see you can put in some stuff in there. But now this new config example file will actually have some explanations in it. So you do know as a new user in this environment and if you want to compile the firmware yourself and create your own firmware format, you now do know what you need to put in where. So with that out of the way, let's quickly go over to the web UI. Let's take a look. You do see my miner is currently ramping up. I'm using the Node QX Plus, so I don't have the Plus Plus, so I cannot show you the changes on the BM1370 chip, but this shouldn't matter. In general, this is really awesome to see because we don't really have any UI changes. The UI looks as beautiful as previously and everything is just normal. My miner is ramping up currently. It takes a little bit of time there. As I said, there are no really changes. If you do go over to settings, um, there's nothing changed and Swarm has nothing changed. InfluxDB is still there and in system, everything is still the same. And by the way, if you guys are interested into the InfluxDB thingy and wanna know more about that, leave me a comment down below so that I do know this. I'm currently in the preparation of making a video for you to understand how to use Influx and what you can do with it. So with that, I thank everybody for tuning in here and see you in the next update.